Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours for Asia. It's the 12th of September. No, it's the 13th. Sorry, we got to remember where it, this is Asia time zone. 13th Asian. of September. And uh, topic Friday for the today. 13th. That is, it's Friday the 13th. Contributor Spotlight. Spring Security 6. The big one for me for today is Hacktoberfest. And then DevOps World Virtual for information's sake. And that's about it. Meg, anything you want to add? I uh, know I've been doing nothing. So okay, well, so let's look at Olivier Lamy's contributor spotlight. Olivier is a longtime Apache and Jenkins developer living in Brisbane, Australia, and he's our contributor spotlight for the moment. He'll be on the spotlight for two more weeks, and then we'll switch to the next contributor. It's kind of cool that now we've had. Let's see. Let's do a quick tally. We've had three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19. So we've had 20 contributors, spot, contributors highlighted so far, and we That's, keep going. Thanks to those who are doing it. Thanks very much, That's, Kevin. Thanks, Alyssa Tall. Fabulous. Spring Security 6 update is a big one. All right. This thing is the, the, the challenge here is that it, it switches from... Spring Security 5 to 6. It switches from Jakarta or from Java EE8 to Jakarta EE9. It switches from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12, EE9. and maintains compatibility, generally, mostly. Okay, so there are a few examples, few plugins like LDAP that must be lockstep upgrade. So very, very nice work. This weekly, we will choose the next baseline next week. And I expect either one of those two or next Tuesday's weekly will be selected as the baseline because the things are looking quite good on the Jenkins downloads page. Let's look at the current health under weekly releases. So we've only had one community reported issue here. We had several here, but these are, none of them are specific. No, I think at most one of them is specific to spring security. And this one is definitely not specific to spring security. So, mm -hmm. or it's not a bug. It's just, yeah. a, it's documenting the, the, the actual job, the actual task. Now this one did had, uh, have a number of rollbacks. So that may give us some worry, but we're not seeing bug reports to support that rollback. So we'll keep an eye on it. So we think, um, all of the Spring Security 6.x, the basic coding, has been done. Yes. It's implemented. It's all implemented now. That's correct. I think the it's, last time we talked, there were some pieces that they were still working on. Right. It's So it's been good, and it's been good enough and well enough tested to arrive in Jenkins Weekly. Okay. And and so that's that's quite encouraging. And and we'll we'll keep an eye on it, watch it very carefully. All right. Any questions there on Spring Security 6? No, I just add, got answered. Okay, great. So next topic is Hacktoberfest. And this was the this one's the big one that I'd like most of our time today to be spent on. So Hacktoberfest starts 1 October, 1 through 31 October. And we want to be sure we're ready to invite first-time contributors to contribute in ways that are beneficial to Jenkins and well-suited to a new contributor. So Kevin Martins has identified several good first issues. Right now there are four uh, that need, that would fit, suit a first-time contributor real well. I think all of them are screenshot updates. Oh. So follow the directions, take a new screenshot, submit a pull request. 
And uh, Kevin is reviewing additional, uh, re reviewing further to find find other good first issues. All right. We're trying to set a higher bar, uh, a higher bar this time for what we consider a good first issue because we don't want these first time contributors to find themselves deeply frustrated by the experience. Right. right. So. So, for an example, Darren Pope and Bruno Verachtin and I have been refining the code-based changes, not documentation, but code. And here, what we see, oops, let's lower that, let's hide that. Okay, there we go. So, on the code-based dashboard, we, we, as of yesterday, we had 104 we've now shrunk that by narrowing the search criteria. So instead of looking at any bug that has the, the, the right label, we say it must have been created within the last five years. Okay. That way we reduced roughly half the set to those things which are reasonably current. Now, there are certainly some that are outside of that five-year window that may still be good, but these are the best candidates, we think, for someone to help us with bug reports. Mm -hmm. So now the, I think Meg, one of the questions for you would be, oh, and then there's this on the new doc site that has its issue list. And the new doc site probably is not well-suited to a first time contributor because the takes takes a lot of work to figure out how to do the development it's still very much in in actively being developed stage so yeah. we've we've intentionally not done anything here to say oh these things are good first issues So Meg, would you be willing to look with me and let's take a look at the documentation good issues and let's look at all the issues and see if there are any that we see as candidates to be marked as good first issue. Sounds good. Good, okay. What about that archive old LTS change logs? This one, a good question. This one is I think is a poor choice because it requires Ruby development inside the um, inside the the change log. So in the inside the change log generator. So if one were knows Ruby well, would knows, it be a good for Ruby? knows Ruby well and is willing to learn how the Jenkins site generator works? And for me, that's the bigger challenge: is they'd have yeah. to reverse engineer. How does the Jenkins site generator convert a YAML file into this page? Mm -hmm. Because what Tim's saying is, hey, it doesn't make any sense for the LTS changelog page to, as a single page to have things that go back all the way to 2014. Right. Right. That just doesn't make any sense. We don't support them. If somebody needs to see something back that far, they can always use, let's use this example, actually. They can use this. Oh, no, they cannot. Okay, so the, the individual pages appear to only be for the newer ones. Okay, so the really ancient ones. So this is the one that you, we see on page here is, is already four years old. Uh -huh. And the four-year-old page, I can get to an individual page all the way back to, yeah, let's see how far back, all the way back to five years ago, I can see an individual page dedicated to, to that change log. Okay. So, so Tim's point is, hey, we don't need anything more than five years yeah. old. We probably don't need anything more than one year old because we don't. Do we to... document how they do that? How they do what? Get back to the older pages if they want to. Is that written any place? Uh, no, it's just assumed that they'll click through this 
the the hyperlink here okay now if we go beyond the really if we get into really ancient history this one so back um back eight years ago we don't have individual pages the first one with an individual page is 2.32 okay 2016 that's still a long time ago yeah so but but the reason i would say that this is not a a it's first time is the ruby code to find it will finding it will be a challenge and then making it work correctly is is i think not nearly as interesting as as some of the other changes that are much simpler right yeah that's it's some of this good first issue i'm thinking about it with captain too i'd like to have a category like most of the captain new people are indian and african college students uh -huh. and they're pretty green but what if somebody comes in who's not so green somewhat new to jenkins or like i wouldn't have to know a lot about jenkins to work on that one if i knew ruby you know if i knew these other things it was clearly specified you know um good first for people with experience or you know i don't know what the category is right but it's sort of like i mean like if i was going to go in and help out another open source project I'm not going to stick around very long if all I'm doing is replacing screenshots and yeah okay so a, an expert if somebody's an expert and wants to contribute good first issue is not nearly rigorous enough is it they no. need something and else I mean I might I might I want to do something trivial just to work through the process right as even because I maybe if you know enough all the gits are the same but my experience where I don't is every project gets there's a couple of little wrinkles in it that are a little different right so I want yep. to do that with something trivial that I don't care if I lose and have to redo or something mm -hmm. but and I don't know if we have but somebody who's like new to Jenkins but an experienced developer you know things that would be interesting that you don't have to know all the ins and outs of Jenkins to succeed right at. Right, exactly. Yep. But okay, well, let's continue our search. We've got. I can take up to another five minutes. I think still. Let's keep looking. How about author descriptions? Author descriptions. Authors should have description. Oh, that's an interesting one. Oops, nope, not that one. This one. Suggestion. Looks like a UI thing, right? Very much so. Yeah, it looks like somebody has has a a prototype that they've been running. But unfortunately, they don't share any of the code for their prototype. So they show the picture in the UI. And where does it end? I mean, so then that was more than a year ago. Is this, has there been any action since then? None. No, it, it, it died out, died out in May of 2023. And they, but is the prototype what you would like? Well, uh, the prototype is, I don't object to the prototype. Let's let's look at let's look at how the page looks now. This this is what he this author is proposing as after. Let's look at the before, because I, I have to regularly remind myself how does it look before. So if we yes. look at the blog, and we jump to the author's page, like this. See that's what we have today, and I think what is being proposed is put some additional text. Is it more text on the page or I can click on the user and get more background or so if you if we look at this image, what he proposed was when when it's in a bigger view, expand it and include, in this case, he included a description of Mark in Tyler's card, but it's that kind of thing. So in the top mm -hmm. right hand corner, you see 
the idea was edit that and insert some text. Now, and I think that's reasonable. It just, this really would be very much web work, right? That, mm -hmm. and, and Zbinex concerns here are absolutely valid. The length of the description is, is wildly variable. So if we look at, let's take some examples. Here is my rather long and wordy description with hyperlinks, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we look at, what's a, a really good example of a short one? I think Vodex is very short, not even as short as I was thinking. There are some that are so short as to be just amazing. Yeah, there we go. This author has no biography defined. Uh, and it's and what about maintenance of this stuff too? Maintenance because is Tyler still contributing? Uh, no, but we don't because he because he was because he's an author of blog posts and you can see them here. Tyler should continue to be available. Likewise, Kosuke. Kosuke is not actively involved, but but. But it okay. That's still true. Um, Tyler's is not true. Tyler's is not true in what sense? It, well, he he has for the past seven years. That's oh, not oh, true. right. This okay. In other this words, is, should be right to say Tyler was part of the Jenkins project from something to something. Right, right. So the, I see what your point is. Yes, that is that is certainly inaccurate. And his last post was uh, four years ago. Okay. Three years ago, three, we're in 2024 now, right? So three years mm. ago. Yes. And so, and even that one really was, was an exception. His contributions dropped off several, a year or two before that. Right. So yeah, you're right. That one's, but there are plenty of inaccuracies and in things like that. Let's see if we can find what another. What does Oleg say? Uh, I, this one is, is, is actually still accurate. It was a core it committer. It'd be nice if it had the dates on it, but maybe that's not necessary. Yeah, so it. Oleg's is wrong. Yeah. Because he's not a board member. Uh-huh. And he's actually not an active core maintainer. So But he was yeah, that actually that one just I I want to put all the specifics in, but that's going to be harder to maintain. Right. But exactly. He was well, because you can go and see what the blogs are. I guess you can figure out the dates. Well, but but this one, okay, says now he is working at Wiremock, and that's in fact not true. He now works at Gradle, if I remember right. Sometimes. Well, so, and they, I mean, they're kind of, if they want to come in and update, like, did I read, so KK is now back. Did I hear that uh, Cloudbees bought he's, KK? He, he's back at Cloudbees, but he is not active in the Jenkins project. But if he wanted to come on here and say what his project is now and how it relates to Jenkins. He, he could certainly update his, his biography if he wished to. Absolutely. To, but we sort of need to put standards in too, right? Because we don't want people to turn this into an advertisement for their startup or whatever. Right. Well, and that's why for me, it's Kosuke is the creator of Jenkins is a fair statement. That's a very reasonable statement. And Anything more than that is more challenging. Yeah. All right. Well, Meg, I apologize. Thanks for your time. I'm going to call us done for today. We didn't get very far on that. Sorry Actually, about that. we we made good progress. And that was the kind of thing I wanted was this kind of looking for things that might fit Hacktoberfest is a very useful exercise because it also cleans up our, our systems. Yes. Cool. All right. So Thanks, Meg. Next week, same time, same place. Next week, same time, same place. Okay, have a great week.